Welcome to Before You Say I Do. My name is Chris Carter and this is a brand new episode. If you're watching, this is City TV. And if you're listening, of course, it's 97.3 City FM. If you're wondering what this show is about, this is that show that helps you answer all the questions that you have always had, you know, when it comes to walking down the aisle. We get to share some nuggets with experts and also go get into deep conversations that will help you, you know, get ready for that special thing. Anyway, um, I actually have my guest with me, but before I introduce my guest, let's take a quick breather and we'll be back. Welcome back. It's still before you say I do. And today we are going to be having a conversation on planning your family there are a lot of people that are getting ready to walk down the aisle to get married to say i do but have you ever sat down to plan with your partner about the kind of family you want how many kids you want parenting style and all that well today we are going to be speaking on that and in the studio with me is marie rose saki an entrepreneur and a certified counselor hello marie rose Hello, Chris. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Um, it's I mean, it's nice to have you here again. Thank you. All right, so let's talk about planning the family. How important is it to have this conversation before saying I do? Thank you. It's very important, actually. <laughs> um, that's, unless you don't want children mm -hmm. in your family. But if you want children, your own biological children, you have to plan for it. If you don't want your own biological children, you want other, you have to plan for it. Mm -hmm. Unless you don't want children at all, it's between you and I, and mm -hmm. that's it. So um, in your relationship, it's just expedient to know what exactly your partner's thoughts mm -hmm. are about parenting and your thoughts. You harness them to get um, to some point where you know that um, when I was about to marry, I remember I used to say I wanted to have a, a Range Rover full of children, mm -hmm. you know, and then you marry and you realize that the reality is not so. Mm -hmm. So you might want so many children because you come from a big family or you want small number of children because you are not used to big family. It all depends on what you want. So you and your partner would have to decide know your family background, where you're, where you're coming from. Some people, they were born uh, like a loners or mm -hmm. single. And because of that, they, they would want to have a bigger family to just fill their family up because maybe their family is small already. So in that case, you have to um, be able to, let's say if the man was born as an only child and he wants a lot of children. And those women are like, hey, a lot of children was going to mess up my body. So I want just one child or two children you have to sit down and talk about it. Mm -hmm. Come to some kind of agreement, how many children you want to have. And when you decide on how many children you want to have, it doesn't end there. How are you going to take care of these children? You know, um, what kind of schools would you want your children to go to? You have to discuss all these things. Mm -hmm. The kind of school you want to go, them to go to, to um, the kind of lifestyle you want to give your children. Some people want to give their children just an ordinary life, I mean, nothing special. Others want to give their children this life where, you know, everything is... Yeah, um, at their disposal. At their disposal, and, and life is good, go to good schools and all that. This brings in the fact that you have to have some kind of a budget or some kind of an income or financial life that would be able to support the kind of family you want to have. So it means that you have to plan um, how you budget for that. If you don't have the money already, then you have to work and plan towards it and save towards having children. Even if you have the money, you have to still put out some, put money. Out some money dedicated to the children. Because if you're having one child, the cost will be different. If you have two children, the cost is going to double. Three will triple. So you have to look at all these things. And if you have children, then it will mean you may, not, you may need some, especially if you have more children, you may need some kind of help who come in to help with the care of the children even if it's a family member or it's a, a house help or whatever it's going to incur extra costs you put all these things all right not only that you have to think about your nutrition you want to have babies it's not just uh, getting up and you, you want to have a family 
you have to take good care of yourself. Your body must be in top shape to be able to produce healthy children. So you have to look at, look at your nutrition and all that, what you eat and what you do, where you're going to stay. Think about your house where you want to raise the environment within which you want to raise your children. If you are living in a certain environment that you think that raising children there is going to be problematic, you have to think of relocating. Mm -hmm. So you have to look at all these things and then consider extended family. How much influence do you want your extended family to have on your children? And all these things. Grandparents um, influence and all that help here and there. You have to consider all these things. If you, if you are the um, kind of person who likes to write things down, write it down in a little book and keep it somewhere right. so that you can refer to it. All right. yeah. So how do couples actually come to a compromise? And um, especially with the number of children factor because usually that seems to be a problem and some people don't even talk about it and maybe when they get to counseling in church and they say how many kids do you want the man says six and it's just two and everybody's like and the, the counselor now realizes oh so you guys have not even spoken about this so how to you know like how do the couples come to a compromise not just the woman, but the man too. Everyone, you know, agreeing, okay, we can't have this. We are all going to work together and see how we can come together to agree. Yes, um, it's very necessary. Like I said, I always wanted a big family. Um, I think my husband was quite indifferent about it. Mm -hmm. But um, circumstances can also dictate to you how many children you, you can have. Um, when you marry, you might not even know your fertility level and all these mm -hmm. things. Yeah. So some people even would go and check their fertility before they, they marry yeah. to know their potential. How many eggs? How many, yeah. Yes, how many children they can have or how, how they can have, how many children they can have or whatever, how they can conceive and all these things. But most of us, we don't do that. We just throw it to chance and then it happens. So you, you tell your husband or you tell your wife, there's how many children. Once you know that there's different in your expectations, then you have to talk about it and come to a compromise and agree. Maybe, okay, we'll take the two like that or mm -hmm. we'll take the three. You know, sometimes some people might say, oh, I want to have two children. They end up having six children. Why? Because they wanted in their minds they're going to have a boy and a girl. Mm -hmm. And then now they start producing and it's all the girls coming and they want a boy. So they keep going on and on and on. It's still an agreement between the two of you. The two of you have to agree that this is what we want to do. So now we are exceeding our targets because we want a boy. So we decide to do that. Or we want a girl. We decide to do that. Some people, too, don't care. They can just have one boy or one girl, mm -hmm. and that's it. So you agree that this is what we are going for. There must be that agreement. You have to do talking. You have to be intentional about it. You don't leave it to chance. Sometimes, too, it might not be your fault. I mean, um, um, natural things, checks. Yeah. Yeah. And so you marry, and the babies are not coming as you want. Maybe you want four children, but they just get one and it's not coming again. Sometimes you can get one and it will take 15 years to get another one. So you can only, you can only have two or you can only have one. Okay. All these things. So if you marry and maybe you want to have one and you realize that you had one and another one came quickly without your planning and everything, then it means that you have to seek for extra help right. to plan the, the, the family. Mm. Maybe you can, you, you can have, you see your potential that you can have more children. So you can go ahead and um, see a family planning aspect to help you as to how you can manage right. um, the number of children you can have. So, right. So what know. about parenting styles? Because obviously people come from different backgrounds. And if one of the party comes from a background that is, um, you know, where the parents are sort of like, um, let you do what you want to do, like um, you're free to speak to your parents. And then one comes from a very strict background. You know, they all both have different ideologies because of how they grew up now how can they now agree to this is how we want to train our kids because this will be healthier for our kids because probably we had to unlearn and learn new things so in the situation where one person does not want to unlearn because my dad was strict so the children i must flog them if they do stuff like that you understand because i still hear I people <laughs> saying that because my dad used to beat me it's corrected me we need to beat the kids. So now, how does that dynamic now work? Um, yeah, um, parenting, we have different styles of parenting. We have authoritarian, mm -hmm. we have authoritative, mm -hmm. we have permissive, 
and we have, um, you know, um, um, uh, what do you call unavailable, or uh, they just don't really mind, yeah. you know, that free yeah. space. They're sort not of freedom, available. Like yeah. SFL, yeah, kind of thing. So the authoritarian is the one that is so strict and rigid and doesn't want to give any space. What I say is final. I'm your dad. You are a child. What mm -hmm. I say is final. I am always correct. You are always wrong. That mm -hmm. kind of. So it has its effects on the children. And then we have the authoritative that allows the children, tell them the rules on the ground and allow the children also to speak sometimes right. and um, explain things to them mm -hmm. back and forth and all that. Then we have the permissive which allows the children to, they put the rules down and allow the children to do whatever they want, you know. And in permissive homes, sometimes you can have children becoming obese. They just open the fridge and eat as and eat much everything. as they want. Yes, yeah. and all that. No control in the house. They watch TV all day mm -hmm. and all those kind of things. So um, these are some of them. And then the, um, the unavailable ones, they are absentee parents or whatever. Um, the children are always are with their nanny somebody, yeah. or somebody. They never are really there. The children do what they want. And um, those are the children that sometimes uh, some people refer to as free rangers. Mm -hmm. They wake up in the morning, they themselves would have to fend for themselves and, and, and then look for their... Sometimes they grow up becoming very, very resilient and strong yeah. and independent and all that. But then it impacts them in another way. So in that case, when you know where your partner is coming from, you have to be explicit in your conversation and say that this is where I'm coming from. This is a kind of lifestyle I Lived. experienced. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is that nobody really used one particular style to raise the children. You can decide to adapt certain different, different styles, styles at different times. If the child is being stubborn, there's a, a kind of style you have to apply. If the child is being good, there's a, a style you can apply. So you can't use one particular one to raise a child. You have to just understand that this is where I'm coming from. So um, when you know that your partner is coming from that background and that background is showing too much in the relationship mm -hmm. or in the um, parenting, then you can become a check to your partner, right. you know, by either calling him in and maybe sometimes yeah. cal calming yeah. him down or whatever. Um, sometimes you can also decide that at any particular point in time, maybe one phase would represent, for, represent a certain kind of action in yeah. the house. So when it comes to certain things, it's daddy that handles yeah. it. When it comes to certain things, it's mommy it's that funny. handles it. So the children know that even if they go to their daddy, at the end of the day, their daddy will send them to mommy for that decision to be made or for that help to be got. And then if it comes to a certain, the mommy will say go to daddy because daddy has the final say on that. It also helps to balance out and to harness your background, you know, very well in the children. Otherwise, if it's just one person bringing in, then there's that trouble where um, the effect of what you have experienced in the past will just right. be impacted, whether positively or negatively, mm. into the child. Okay. So, yeah. All right. So let's take a quick break and we'll come back and continue the conversation. All right, um, you're welcome back to Before You Say I Do. And we're actually having a conversation on planning your family, planning your family before you actually walk down the aisle. And I'm having this conversation with Marie Rose Saki, an entrepreneur and a certified counselor. All right, Marie Rose, so we've spoken about, you know, how many kids, how to deal with that, and we've spoken about parenting style. But people have all of these big ideas about, you know, wanting to be parents. Oh, I want a child, I want a child. But they never know what comes with it and how life changes after children are presented into the picture or when children enter these group chats, you understand, called family, right? So how can one actually prepare for the changes that they will meet 
when the little ones start popping in. Yes, that makes me smile because there was a story once told about two young women who wanted children and then somebody took them to an elderly person to help them have children. And then a man said, the only help I can give you is that when you, you should know that the, I will not charge you nothing, you don't pay anything. The only thing you should understand is that when you have the child, you're going to go mad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, the other one of them said, oh, she doesn't want to go mad. No, she can't go crazy and she can't pay that price. So she refused to. And then the other one said, it doesn't matter. She, she would want, she wants children. So she would pay the price of going insane. And then, oh, she would be mad or crazy, whatever. So she would go ahead. And the man helped her to get pregnant. So she got pregnant. And she was looking out to get crazy. But she wasn't getting crazy. But first year, second year, third year. And then she went to see the man. And the man was, he said, oh, um, I've had a baby, but I thought that I'll by this time be walking on the street naked or something like, like that. And the man said, asked him a few questions at home and he said, yes, I'm always yelling and, and, and calling out, stop this, that. I said, that's the madness I was talking about. You know, so um, just on a lighter note, um, people, I think we should all, we would all know that in, in homes or would have observed that in homes, it doesn't come that easy. But just to prep yourself, sometimes it doesn't even occur to you because it becomes like a normal thing. You're in the house, you don't even pay attention to how, when you're growing up, your parents were talking so much and they had to really, you know, um, put in a lot of sacrifices and all that. So it's best when you, ha you are planning or you found your suitor, you look for uh, married books to read about parenting, things like that, it will help you. You get some ideas, some expectations. Um, you can go for counseling. You can go for um, marriage workshops or premarital workshops, stuff like that. It helps prep your mind. If you are in a church, if you're a church person, sometimes church organizes some of these things for singles. So you look out for opportunities like that to go and learn all these things, how you prepare yourself, because when the children come in, it will mean a lot of sacrifices. It will mean a lot of expenses. It will mean a lot of sleepless nights. It will mean a lot of tiredness. It will mean a lot of, you know, forgetting about yourself. It will mean, you know, so many things. And so you are aware that when it happens to you, you don't get frustrated or it doesn't depress you. Because mm -hmm. some people, because they don't know, they get in there. And when they start experiencing all these things, it can even send them into depression mm -hmm. or it can send them taking certain decisions that they forget themselves. It's said over and over again that sometimes people marry and then you see the, uh, the women especially, oh, they are all high fashion women and blah, 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 but they marry and then now you go home and she's sitting there, it's like she's forgotten about herself. She doesn't comb her hair, she doesn't do anything again. And it becomes a problem to the marriage. Mm -hmm. The husband wants children, she bears children, and then all these things happen. It's because maybe you are not prepped enough. So every time you are so tired, you can't even catch up with yourself. Yeah. And so you what get about, into these um, things. Your partner not helping you. Yes. So when you have been able to get a, a pre knowledge of what is to happen or the kind of children, sometimes you can't even know the kind of child you're going to have. Yes. There's some children you have, they are so calm. You mm -hmm. say, you like, put them down, they are there. Sit down, they are sitting there. There are some children when you have, you say, sit down. You said, I won't sit down. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you are trying to calm them and they are jumping in mm -hmm. your face. They can even actually put their fingers in your eye, poking your eye, putting, when you are trying to get sleep. There are babies like that, toddlers. They are putting their hands in your ears. They are doing Very everything. Very curious. So, yes. Mm -hmm. So you have to have that understanding that when you have babies, the man will also put hands to it. You go through all the nine months to carry the baby. The woman does that. But the man will also have to put in a lot of help when the baby comes so that he can also let you get some kind of respite because you are cooking, you are washing, and all these things. Somebody has to carry the baby and, and all that, calm the baby. Or when you have to, even when you're on leave, because when you have a baby, you know you'll be on leave for a while. When you're on leave, the man goes to work. When he comes back, he should remember that you've spent all the day taking care of the child. So he should also come and take over a little bit so they can catch up. That's something I, I, I saw in Dubai some time ago when I, I went to Dubai. And I realized that around 5 o'clock, the women, they, they dress up even yes. in their hijab, yeah. whatever. And then they go around like, ah. And somebody told me, yeah, that's what they do. 
when the husbands come home, they take over the children so that the women can also go out and refresh themselves and come back home with new ideas. They, they are not uh, uh, logged in the house with the children all the time. So in the evening, you see them, the mothers, they go out, go to the malls, whatever, just to get some fresh air and then come back home while their husbands are taking care of the children. Yeah. So we need to come to that kind of understanding as couple and then know that um, it's not on one shoulder. Right. It is, it is a sacrifice, like I said. Having parenting is a lot of sacrifice, okay. and you must be prepared to pay for that price okay. of being a parent. All right, so um, we've been talking about, you know, how we'll be planning the family as a couple and all of that, but, you know, what, you know, we're never told most of the time is that, okay, you can have it in your mind that probably I want 10 children, I want a million children, and God would say, it's not now. You're not going to have any kids now. You understand? The issue of childlessness comes in. So how do couples navigate that situation? Especially people going to say, I do. They need to have the idea that it can happen, it might not happen. So what would you tell them? <laughs> yeah, it's a very difficult situation. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very difficult situation and very frustrating. But then um, you have to have hope in the fact that if the baby hasn't come yet, it's not the end of the world, you can adapt a child, either your, uh, a family member's mm -hmm. child and take care of, or you can go to social, uh, social welfare yeah. or whatever, so and then orphanages, orphanages yeah. and, and adapt a child. But that one too is time bound. That is what people don't know. Yes, it is time yes. bound. You should be able to do that Back and forth before a certain age. Mm -hmm. If you wait too long, you might not be able to adapt in that formal institution unless you go to the informal institutions to go and adapt. You can adapt a child. You can just, if, even if you don't want to adapt the child with that um, you know, official Analysis, thing, yeah. you can just take somebody's child and, and live with the person and take care of the child. And many people have done that and then found themselves pregnant later and had their own child. So, because it relaxes your nerves, the, 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 especially when every month you, you, know, you go through your cycle and you see that, oh, it's coming again, it's coming again, it can depress you. So having a, a child or somebody, a young people, person around you to, to mentor or to parent reduces that stress on you. You can also go for, um, now there's a lot of development, you go, you talk to your gynecologist, and then you can do IVF. Some people have tried IVF so many times, it still doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to risk your life to that extent? That is not my place to really talk about much because mm -hmm. it's more medical. But then you can try that one as well if you have what it takes to do it. You can do that now. Uh, people are even doing surrogacy and all those things. So you could also try it if you believe in it. Some people, their family values or their value system does not allow them to do that. So they will not go that way. But basically, there's hope. If you try all and it doesn't, it doesn't work. There's so many children. There's so many homeless children. There's so many children, not necessarily even homeless, but who are looking for parents, some you know, responsible people, people to take care of them, to love them. And um, we can open up to such people, and then we can have many children. Sometimes people have their own biological children, but they still bring in people mm -hmm. like that and, and parents because you never know who will be there for you. So you parent people and make the world a better place. Mm -hmm. We have to think about the fact that when we are parenting, we are even not parenting our own biological children for ourselves. We are parenting them for themselves and for the world mm -hmm. because they grow up and they have their own life. They decide to leave you and they can go and live somewhere and it, it, it might not be what you plan, you know. So it's, um, it's always good to just parent with an open mind for the rewards that God will give you, but not the rewards of the children. Right, yeah. right. Um, I actually like the fact that you said open mind, because yeah. a lot of people are so close-minded that they don't even believe in adoption, they don't believe in wanting to bring anybody. So I always ask myself, if you cannot do that in your waiting period, that shows that you might not even be a good parent. That's, like, that's what yeah. I see. Yeah. Well, um, you talked about values, so how important are values when it comes to planning a family? Yes, uh, values are very important. You have to decide with your partner how you're going to raise your children. 
If you're a Muslim, you have a certain kind of lifestyle, right. beliefs. Yeah. You want to bring your children up in that way. Not only that, parents, if you're Christian, you also want to bring your children up in a certain way. These are things, values you pass on to your children or you inculcate in a child. Not only that, you have to teach your children basic things like love, how to be able to love people. They go to school, they interact with other children, how they should be able to take care of them or show them love, how they should be able to share, how they sh should be able to uh, forgive when people hurt them or when their siblings hurt them. Mm -hmm. Some people, does it, they don't know how to forgive because they were not brought, brought up, up that in way. that way. Yeah. Yes, and so they marry and becomes a headache. When they are offended, small offense, they will hold it and always refer their partner to mm -hmm. it. Ten years ago, you did this, and then the last three years, you've done it, and today, too, you've done it, and they will draw all the history about it. We mm -hmm. should learn marriage is an institution that you have to always, the baseline should be forgiveness. Learn how to forgive. So when we inculcate some of these things into to be kind, learning to share, you know, being honest, being, being um, as good as you can be, you know, um, uh, what, what kind of having good virtues, you know, having good morality, knowing the wrong from the right and doing the right thing. There's some people, they don't even know the wrong from the right. They just do anything. But let's teach our children these values and, and then they grow to become good people who would be good to you and to the society. Right, yes. right. Right. So we have to have that family values, and some of these family values can be family values that we are bringing on mm -hmm. from our background right. where we grew up, um, the positive ones, because some of the values, sometimes they might be uh, some values that might not be very positive, but the positive values, we should bring them and agree on both sides mm -hmm. and then help the children find a comfortable place to live and grow. Right. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. This oh. has been a very interesting conversation. Thank you. I really enjoyed this. And ladies and gentlemen, we've been talking about planning your family and it's you just don't wake up and start a family. You actually have to sit down with your partner and talk about some of these things. I hope we answer some of the questions um, that you've had in your mind concerning the issue of, you know, planning family before walking down the aisle. Well, my name is Chris Carter, and this has been Before You Say I Do. See you next episode. Bye-bye.